Hello, Sagittarius. <laughs> Welcome to your November 2021 tarot and astrology reading up in here. So let's get into it, Sag. This is for Sag risings, suns, or moons, and they will likely resonate in that order. The reading will resonate in that order. Risings may resonate most, so make sure you check out all your signs just to be sure. So Sagittarius, happy birthday if your birthday's in November, but if it's not, happy early birthday if your birthday's in December. November is a fucking month, man. If you did not see my November astrology video where I went over all of it, what's coming for us as a collective, I would go watch that because it's a lot, okay? November kicks off a shitstorm that has been really brewing all year up until this point. This is kind of like the peak time of this year where everything last year and the year before, even 2020, has been boiling up to these points. And so it's a really big deal. So we're gonna talk about how it's affecting you this month. And right away, I wanna tell you, Sag, that there could be like a lot of things going on subconsciously. It could feel like things are kind of out of your control or hard to reach, or like there's this subconscious restlessness or anxiety that's happening. Kind of like this unknown restlessness that you're feeling, this intensity that you're feeling to do with possible old emotional attachments that are dragging you down, that are making you feel like you can't move forward in some way. And these shadows, you could call them, are going to come up this month. November is a very shadowy like month for you guys. And it's really pointing out to you what has been below the surface, what has been beneath the surface, but slowly boiling. And that boiling is going to get more intense and more intense the first half of November until it finally kind of explodes the second half of November. And really that's what November is. It's, it's the first couple of weeks of November are going to feel like a pressure cooker. It's going to feel intense, but at the same time, there's going to be a certain level of, <laughs> there's going to be a certain level of randomness and unexpectedness that is coming in your day-to-day -day life with certain responsibilities or obligations that you have. And it's going to feel like it's out of your control when at the same time, maybe you're being separated, maybe you're being pushed aside, maybe you're being pulled away from something and you've been and you're going to be in this conflict where it's like I just want to be left alone or I just want to move to the background I just want to avoid things or I just want to like go do my own thing be separated from all this or certain events may happen that are unexpected or kind of heavy or daunting or uh stagnant you know something may happen that forces you to separate yourself or remove yourself from certain situations in your life where you are possibly a little bit more isolated or a little bit more alienated uh, the first couple weeks of November where you're maybe feeling like I just need to go do me or I just need to go take care of myself and you do. Sag. Um, it's going to be so, so important this month that you take care of yourself, that you take care of your mental state, that you take care of whatever is going on beneath the surface, whatever you've been avoiding, because it's going to be very clear this month. It's going to be up in your face. It's going to rise above the surface. And if you don't deal with it, you're going to see kind of like a shakeup in your day-to-day -day life, in your reality. It's going to manifest as possibly a chaotic, unexpected, out of control energy in your day-to-day -day life, in your job, in your health. And so these things are going to be really important that you pay attention to this month, that you take care of this month. Where are you, you know, the responsibilities or certain obligations, certain commitments, certain things that, you know, certain situations in your day-to-day -day life could be feeling very heavy or overwhelming this month. It could have something to do with something you're working on, something you're learning, something going on in your immediate environment, your siblings, relatives. It could have something to do with your neighborhoods or your community. Um, and, you know, even like your city or your town or some kind of short trip, but with Saturn in your third. And that's going to build and it's going to feel like possibly you may 
it may feel like you're kind of losing your mind a little bit in the beginning of the month. I'm not even going to lie to you. I'm going to keep it all the way real here. It's going to feel like, holy shit, have I lost my mind? What am I doing? Uh, you're going to, you're also going to be like scared to express it for some reason or feeling like you can't express it for some reason. And it's going to be a very inward time. What this energy is doing, Sag, it's not like punishing you. I know it doesn't sound great, um, but it's not like something that's like, I would say, I wouldn't say it's like terrible, but it's pointing you to something, some kind of underlying truth that needs to be processed, felt, and worked through. Like you have possibly been avoiding something for a long time or something has gotten stagnant or something has been resting on your shoulders for far too long. And Mars and Scorpio in your 12th house, if you're sad rising, is going to dig it up from the grave and it's going to say, hey, this was not dealt with properly and so we need to deal with this okay you could have a lot of situations coming back around from childhood from your past past cycles past life issues past karma possibly for some reason i even want to say uh ancestry or ancestral generational karma you could be dealing with uh a certain level of things that you've been trying to escape or things that you've not properly held, uh, dealt with or handled, that you've not properly processed psychologically. And this is a very psychological month. I mean, this month is like a psychological thriller for real. Uh, so this is gonna be a month where it's like, okay, am I gonna finally do this? Am I gonna finally face this, this deep, massive, sorry about that, Saj, but this is about finding your power through your own underworld your 12th house is like your own underworld where you avoid things where things go into your subconscious mind and with scorpio there it's very psychological your 12th house is also where you are removed from your day-to-day -day life or society for whatever reason and for that reason it can rule hospitals institutions things like that things that keep you away from society, even imprisonment. And that can be literal or it can be metaphorical. Like, are you, is there something that is imprisoning you? And that is the topic of this month. Where do you need to break free? Where do you need to go into your own underworld? And with a certain level of curiosity with the Page of Wands and the Queen of Swords here, and really face that truth, really see the truth behind whatever it is that you've been, you know, trying to keep hidden or hiding from yourself. And there could be a lot that comes out this month in terms of people around you in your life. Like you could start seeing that, you know, certain decisions that you made to have swords and the lovers regarding certain relationships, certain people. Uh, for some reason, I even want to say your mother. Um, I don't know, intuitively, I'm feeling like possibly for some of you, it could deal with a mother or a uh, mother figure in your life, like a grandmother or a maternal figure. But it's like you're taking the blindfold off this month, like something like the blindfold is kind of being ripped off this month. And it's like, you could keep doing your old behaviors, you can keep self sabotaging, you can keep going against yourself and like torturing your own self with certain behaviors, certain patterns, or by allowing certain people into your life, you know, that's really going to bring up what you hide from yourself and your own subconscious self-sabotaging shit, you know, your own habits that you, that you constantly do that keep winding you back in certain situations that are not really aligned with who you really are anymore. And so this month it's like, am I gonna do what I always did? Am I going to like continue to be scared and act out of that scared place? Or am I going to face something? Am I going to be accountable? Am I gonna do the responsible but hard thing? 
right? And that's what this month is about. It's not about make trying to make some quick fix or trying to, you know, make some quick change that is not going to go well. You need to be thinking about the long term. In the long term, what will actually be good for you? What foundation do you need to set for the long term and what do you what needs to end for that to happen? The 12th house is also the house of endings. And so this is also very much about ending certain things or certain things ending in your life, whether it's by you or whether it's out of your control. And there will be some things this month, Sag, that are out of your control, but you do have the control on how you react to them. You know, are you going to keep running away from your problems with the Ace of Wands and the Six of Swords here? Or are you going to act differently? Are you going to actually take your power back and stop letting these other people or situations or these fears, these shadows of yours have the power by running from them? right? Because when you're running from them, when you're avoiding them, when you're suppressing them, you're basically saying that they are more powerful than you. And so you can't handle them. And so you just need to get away from them. They just need to go, which really makes them stronger. And so that is why it's so, so important to really get to the bottom of what is going on here. You know, we start off with the page of swords and the six of, um, the six of pentacles and the ace of swords and so what i see here sag with this page of swords is it's like going into the underworld as you can see this is the uh zombie tarot it'll be linked down below but he is kind of like creeping in this door like taking a peek you need to develop a sense of curiosity and yes it can be scary but it really like when you go into it with curiosity rather than fear or rather than with some kind of crazy expectation, it ends a lot better. Like it goes a lot better and you're more open-minded to it. And then we have the six of pinnacles. And so in this particular six of pinnacles, it's kind of like the carrot and the, uh, rabbit you know what i mean like how like basically like you're you're chasing your own tail kind of so to say or you're holding something in front of yourself or someone else's and you're chasing it but like do you ever really get to it you know and then we have the ace of swords and so it's kind of like a moment of clarity where you're cutting yourself off of this leash where you're like i'm so sick of doing this to myself i'm so sick of following in these vicious circles these vicious patterns these vicious cycles, you know, these self-sabotaging behaviors, and I'm ready to cut the leash. And you have this moment of truth and clarity. And then we have the nine of hazards, which is the nine of pinnacles. It's like, like I was saying before, are you ready to build that sturdy foundation for yourself? Are you ready to be accountable, to be re to take that responsibility back and to do something that's going to get you to the long haul rather than just escaping it, rather than continuing to run from it or follow in these old footsteps of yours. You know, there will be like past versions of yourself really becoming very clear to you. Um, you know, you're really gonna see like, oh, I could content, like I could go this old way again, or I could do something new. I could do something that brings a different result this time. And then we also have the Page of Wands and the Queen of Swords, which really tells me, like, like I was kind of saying before, going in there with a certain level of curiosity and being able to mentally allow yourself to be open-minded and to not uh just have these like high expectations of how things should be or how you think they should be or how you want them to be right and so this is a massive you know a very massive month for you a very massive month you know what i mean uh and i feel like it's really showing you certain shady behaviors of yourself and possibly other people in your life too whether in your family or with certain friends or relationships, but it's really showing you kind of the futile situations, behaviors, and actions in your life and people in your life where it's like nothing is coming from this. So why are we continuing to do this? Why are we continuing to like to put energy in this situation and or in these behaviors, whatever it may be, when we're not really getting anything in return. Once again, six of pinnacles, right? Um, don't try to take the shortcut because it's not going to work, right? 
But the great thing about this though, Sag, is that by the middle of the month, we start getting into that really Uranian energy. And so there will be some kind of massive breakthrough if you do the work. If you don't do the work, this is when something out of your control could happen that seems very scattered, very chaotic, uh, very unexpected, very radical, that could cause some kind of radical shift or change that really like in your work in your day-to-day -day life in your health and you know things that you're responsible for there could be something breaking here and if you're not if you don't do the work uh there could be something that kind of breaks here because it's like you aren't taking care of yourself or you aren't doing you know you aren't facing these things and so as because of that this manifests you know what i mean it's kind of like uh, i i hate to use the word consequence because i'm not trying to like scare you or be like oh you need to do this or else you know what i mean but that's the kind of energy that we're kind of dealing with in a certain way you know that's one of the ways it can play out it may not play like play out like that for everybody but if you don't tread in a way that is slow and also meaningful like that is like you're getting things done but you're taking your time and you're really doing it um then if you don't do that there could be unexpected results right like Right now with Saturn and Uranus involved with Mars, there are going to be reactions to whatever actions that we take and they could be very costly depending on what actions we take. And so this is a month to be very, very discerning about what you are stepping into, what you're doing, and likely the hard, intense thing is going to be the way. It's gonna be the way that's like, you know deep down is the right way, but it's hard work and it's not going to be easy, but you know that that would make you feel the best and the most secure within yourself and your life by the end of it. And that's the way that needs to be taken. And this is very true in your Oracle cards too. We have Sacred Pool and Into the Unknown, which really tells me that you are really diving deep into your 12th house Scorpio shit, right? This stuff is things that your, that your soul needs to work on, right? It's like things that your soul came here to work on with Sacred Pool. It's like things that you are diving deep into to uncover, even though it's very unknown. And it's like, you just have to trust the process. You're kind of like taking a massive leap of faith, kind of like the full card. And then we also have goblins, which once again, your shadows, your the voices inside of you that tell you different things or, you know, the conditioning that you have, because we also have the bone collector here, which is about our past and our conditioning and, and, how we've been conditioned and how that still affects our views and our life and you know everything um today and so you're going into this energy to clean house right you're doing the work uh you are getting down and dirty you are not fucking around and then we also have ride the wave and so it's like you need to just take your time do that like process things and make sure that you are just continuing to go through it to just to not like stop or whatever and then we even have slow and steady as well which like i was saying this is something to take your time with this is not something to rush into or to try to hurry up and, and find some kind of shortcut <laughs> shortcut or quick fix where you feel like you know like you're bypassing things right like this is not the time for that um at all and that could have consequences too with saturn big daddy saturn is not here to play with us you know what i mean we also have unexpected visitors and so like i was kind of saying um there is a massive unpredictability this month it's like we're trying to make changes but we don't know how they're going to play out and um you know we're like trying to make unpredictable changes right like we we are trying to make changes when we don't when we can't even predict what the next step is and so yeah, and you could also find that maybe people from your past are returning or there's someone unexpected that comes into your life, um, whether that you already know or from your past or someone new in the month of November. And I feel like this contact is going to be very important for you, okay? Um, they may even help you. Um, they may even help you see another side to something, but I also feel like they may be a past energy for some of you guys where it's like where it reminds you of the past and who you used to be. And if you want to continue to go that route or if you want to 
actually do something new and more in alignment with who you are today or who you are like wanting to become. And so anyway, so that's what I'm seeing in your tarot, Sag, and really your astrology too. We have, uh, you know, the, everything I went over with your 12th house and all of that, your 6th, 12th, and 3rd, those are the major things that are getting hit this month. Uh, some specific dates that you could notice. Um, so just in the very beginning of the month, we have the new moon in Scorpio on the 4th, which I'm going to do a whole separate video on, but that's in your 12th house. And that could be a time where emotionally you're digging deep into subconscious triggers, subconscious stuff, or things are coming up, you know, you're feeling restless, or, you know, there could be like a lack of sleep going on, or there could be things behind the scenes that need to be worked on. And then we have Venus moving into Capricorn on the 5th and Mercury moving into Scorpio as well on the 5th. And so um, Venus and Capricorn is a really big deal, Sag. This is your second house of money, finances, values, priorities, possessions, assets. So this is going to be a massive time where that's going to come into focus. Venus is going to retrograde in Capricorn starting December 19th. And so from November, uh, I'm sorry, November 17th to December 19th, uh, Venus is going to be in shadow. So that time period is going to be really important to pay attention to. Any money issues, I would say try to get sorted out by then uh, because there's going to be massive economical changes coming in the world and especially the U.S. if you live in the U.S. Um, over the next like few months to several years. So, uh, but this is starting that cycle now. So, um, just just a preparation. I talk more about that in my November video uh, and also on a podcast that I did recently, but I'm going to have more videos on it too. So anyways, um, around the 7th, give or take a few days, you may also notice a lot coming up in terms of feeling silenced or feeling like you can't talk about something. There could be some heated communication, um, a need to speak up. You know, there could be something you're investigating or uh, you know, feeling like your voice is suppressed in some way because we have the Mars Mercury conjunction square Saturn. There could also be someone like, or really you demanding something of yourself. There could be something suspicious going on, uh, with certain people in your life, something, some things along those lines. So watch for around that time. And then on the 13th, we have Mercury opposite Uranus, and this is going to be the time of speaking your truth. This is going to be the time of speaking up shocking truths, uh, impulsive truths or impulsive communication, unexpected communication, things coming to light, some kind of radical insight, uh, also, you know, enlightening situations or conversations. There could also be, you know, some kind of change in perspective regarding your job, your day-to-day -day life, your work. Um, or your, you know, the 12th house stuff that I've brought up, you know what I mean? Like subconscious things, patterns, cycles, the past, endings, something along those lines. So, uh, and then on the 17th, we have Mars opposite Uranus, which is going to be a massive, massive breakthrough that you may even start noticing like a week before the 17th. So maybe around like November 10th or so. So be watching <laughs> from 11.10 to 11.17, massive breakthrough, a massive urge towards freedom, impulsivity, unconventionality, you know, going against the grain, speaking up, uh, really feeling driven around that time, really feeling like, you know, just be, sh just be wary of impulsive decisions as they may backfire or may not have the result that you're looking for uh, around that time. Um, like I said, it may not be a great time to do anything very sudden or like, you know, impulsive if you haven't thought it through or processed it. So um, then on the 19th, we have a lunar eclipse in Taurus previewing what's to come next year and the year after when the nodes change into Taurus and Scorpio. So this is going to be very, very important. Um, really this whole season, uh, this whole November, Sagittarius is kind of like a preview of what's coming or things that could come up, themes that could come up over the next year and a half because the nodes are going to switch into 
your, the south node is going to come out of your sign and into Scorpio and the north node is going to move out of Gemini and go into Taurus. And so this is a very powerful time and somewhat of a preview. You know, it may not be exactly like this month, just may, there may be themes that come up this month that are ongoing for the next year and a half. So just keep that in mind and really pay attention. Uh, you know, the south node moving into Scorpio, your 12th house, those 12th house themes are going to be very big and you're going to be pushed towards the sixth house of work, your responsibilities, maintenance, keeping up with day-to-day -day activities and things that need to be done. Uh, so that's going to be very big. And then the sun and Mercury are going to move into your sign. Um, the sun on the 21st, Mercury on the 24th, and uh, and then we get to your season. <laughs> so um, yeah, that is basically everything, Sag, for your November uh, forecast and reading. I hope you guys are doing well. Definitely let me know down below if this ends up resonating or you see any of these themes coming up in your life in the month of November. As always, I would love to hear about it and uh, I would love to hear what ends up happening for you like seriously because this month looks to be pretty crazy and I mean it is for everybody so it's not just you so don't worry but um, I would really love to hear what things that you notice coming up in your life, especially if you're Sag rising, uh, just with that 12th, 6th house, 3rd house theme. So anyways, I will see you guys in my other videos. Thank you guys so, so much for watching.